This one goes out to all the hardworking women out there. To the mothers that would stop at nothing to provide the right kind of life for their kids. Especially when all the men in their life are bleep holes. James M. Cain wrote such a woman. And Michael Curtiz directed her. You know Michael Curtiz. A very underrated director who did such films as Angels with Dirty Faces, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and the lesser known Casablanca. Anyway... This is the story about the hardest working woman in film history, Mildred Pierce. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. All you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimper. The film starts off with a bang. Boom! A man has been shot. Who shot him? Why'd they shoot him? We have no idea. We only know that he calls out the name Mildred. Next thing we see is a lonely woman draped in furs walking down the dock. She stops and looks at the ocean. There's desperation in her face. She wants to jump, but a cop stops her. Just because you feel like bumping yourself off, I gotta get pneumonia. He says, if you jump in, I gotta jump in. So... The woman decides against jumping. We assume that this is Mildred Pierce, the main character. She has a controlled confidence, usually reserved for men. She goes down to a local club and there she meets Wally. He wants her and she can woo him. She actually tries to set him up with the dead body, luring him to her lair. There's darkness. There's shadows flickering on the wall from the fire. Reactions are being shown through Shadow as they're talking. Mildred sneaks out. A falling lamp reveals the dead body to Wally. He is trapped. He's locked in. He escapes to cop gunfire. He's been set up by Mildred. Mildred is taken in for questioning. Her daughter Vita and her ex-husband are there as well. Mildred tells her daughter not to worry. She'll take care of it. She always does. Mildred waits. The clock ticks. The papers are rustled. The footsteps echo. And the phone is very loud. Everything is enhanced, setting the mood perfectly. They pin it all on Bert, her ex-husband. She says, no, he's not the one that did it. Then we get the flashback narration. The story unfolds and Mildred is hardworking and dedicated to her daughters. Her oldest a stuck-up high idealist. The youngest, a sweet, innocent girl. And Bert, he's probably screwing around, and he's jobless. He leaves the family and his responsibilities behind. Mildred must now be both mother and father. She becomes a waitress, learns the trade, and gets a place of her own. This is where all the melodrama comes from. Her daughter, Vita. She is a bitch. With no father figure to discipline her, she runs roughshod over her mother, saying things like, Oh, mother. Oh, mother, darling. I love you, mother. Really, I do. But let's not be sticky about it. My mother, a waitress. She needs a slap and gets a few. She borrows money without paying back and at one point blackmails a rich boy after marrying him, claiming that she is pregnant and gets $10,000 and a divorce. She kisses the check, no remorse, laughs about it. There's no baby. Vita is morally reprehensible. And she gets worse. And once the youngest daughter Kay dies of pneumonia, Vita is Mildred's sole motivation. I wish she had a better reason to work so hard. All the men in the movie are crap too. Bert negates his family and wallows in self-pity. 
Wally is a wolf after Mildred in fur clothing, and Baragon is a leeching playboy. Baragon is a charmer and owner of the location Mildred purchases for her restaurant. He's never done a day's work in his life and takes Mildred's money, using the women around him. He's the one seen shot at the beginning. Vita's tastes get more expensive, and Mildred makes some deals that she shouldn't to appease her. And that's where I'll leave you guys off at. If you want to see the ending, watch the movie. It's a melodramatic masterpiece. The cinematography was done by Ernest Haller, who had great working relationships with Betty Davis, Ingrid Bergman, and the star of this film, Joan Crawford. He also shot many great films like Gone with the Wind and Dark Victory. There are many great shots in this movie that are told completely through shadow, like when Wally and Mildred are discussing making the deal for the restaurant, we see only their shadow talking to each other. Oh, Wally, you're wonderful. In all the scenes back at Baragon's place, like when he's shot and the light is flickering from the fireplace, casting these noir-like shadows everywhere, it's really great. There's also a great shot when Baragon is trying to seduce Mildred back at his beach. The waves are crashing against the land, and we all know what that's symbolic of. Bow chicka wow wow.